Okay, in tonight's meeting, we welcomed two new officers. We gave recognition and accommodations to two other officers and our canine officer for um, saving the life of a young resident. And I just think we are very fortunate to have a team that we have here working diligently to keep our public safe and just happy in the, in the city that we're having to live in here all together. And then we went on in the meeting to also speak on the marijuana issue. And we did ultimately pass a cultivation ordinance for the city of Clear Lake that will be enforceable this, year, this season. Moving on to adoption of the agenda. Oh boy, we're getting down to the last few, John. Is there any modifications to tonight's agenda? No, Madam Mayor, there are not. Thank you. Make a motion to accept. Second. Roll call vote, please. Council Member Overton? Yes. Council Member Kernock? Aye. Council Member Sabatier? Aye. Vice Mayor Fortino Dixon? Aye. Mayor Luce All right. Moving on to presentations. Tonight's presentation is by Lieutenant Tim Selly, and he will do some commendations and introductions. So I will turn this over to him. Thank you. officers that we have. First, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Officer Leonardo Flores. Um, he comes to us from Fresno area. He is a graduate of the Golden West uh, High School in Visalia, California. He uh, obtained a bachelor's degree in criminology from the Fresno State and graduated from the Fresno City Police Academy. He is interested in furthering his career, his education, by obtaining a master's degree in counseling. He is also interested in advancing his career and uh, is known to all types of sports and he enjoys fishing. That's Officer Leonardo Flores. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Next, I'd like to introduce Officer Matt Hewitt. He was born and raised in the city of Roanoke Park. Uh, he graduated from Rancho Catawba High School. He earned an associate's degree in criminal justice from Santa Rosa Junior College. He would like to advance his career and aspires to be a patrol sergeant. He is involved in competitive powerlifting. He enjoys driving cars and spending time with his family and friends. And this is Officer Matt Hewitt. He started Monday. Officer uh, Flores started about three weeks to a month ago. Thank you. Nice Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining our team. Um, next, I have the, uh, the honor and privilege um, to talk about uh, three officers. Um, who I believe uh, all um, performed very well and, uh, and had, did an outstanding job. The first one I'd like to talk about is Detective Ryan Peterson. On May 20th um, this year, Detective Peterson was contacted by a woman by the name of Teresa Chase. Uh, Teresa Chase was in the Lake County Jail. She had been released uh, several months early uh, from for good time behavior. Um, Detective Peterson had the opportunity to meet her while she was in county jail briefly, very briefly. Um, and then when uh, Ms. Chase was released from the county jail, she, she, was, uh, she was recovering from being a, a, a drug addict. And while she was in jail, she did a few things like getting involved with the community garden program and things like that, and she wanted to change her life. She was released from county jail early, and. Uh, she had plans when she was released to get into a program. However, because of the, the several months early release, um, they didn't have a space available for her. So she did the only thing she knew, and she uh, met a person in, in jail who she uh, roomed with. And during that time, very briefly, she realized that that was not a good opportunity for her and um, was not conducive to her sobriety. So she needed to leave. She didn't have any friends here and didn't know what to do. She remembered Detective Peterson. She contacted him and uh, told him of her circumstances. Um, Detective Peterson uh, very diligently tried to help her, 
um, tried to um, get her into a program and tried several times through several different agencies and was, was un unable to do so at that time. But he, uh, he stayed diligent nevertheless and uh, finally found a program that would accept her um, and um, made arrangements for that to happen. However, she, she had to get a ride there the next day. Um, Detective Peterson um, very confidently said we will get her there. And uh, then he immediately started contacting resources locally and uh, was able to get help from a pastor from a local church um, who, uh, who helped her, um, with, made arrangements for that ride. Um, also, uh, Detective Peterson made arrangements for her to stay the night somewhere um, at a location. And he later, or I later learned that uh, Detective Peterson also gave um, a monetary donation um, to help further assist getting her to this location, um, which I thought was just above and beyond. I thought it was outstanding um, to help someone that he, he barely knew, and she came to him. Um, and I think it's just awesome that that they, those folks know that they can count on law enforcement. So I'd like to read. Uh, his uh, certificate of commendation. Detective Pearson, step forward. This says, in recognition of your actions while helping a citizen in need who came to you for help when she had nowhere else to go, your professionalism, tenacity, and most importantly, your compassion exemplified what all law enforcement officers should strive for. Due to your willingness to help a person who was struggling with addiction, with whom you only knew through a brief conversation while she was in custody led to a positive outcome for her. Your actions said a positive light on not only yourself, the clearly the police department, but on all law enforcement as well. say two officers, but there's uh, two and a half um, <laughs> officers involved in this. Um, this, uh, with all the different things, um, all of the um, negative publicity that is in surrounding law enforcement is, it's really nice to have Detective Peterson go out of his way to help a person. And I'm really proud of that fact. And the Two and a half officers that I'm going to uh, commend next are uh, Officer Franklin, Officer Mike Gray, and Police K-9 <laughs> Harley. Um, basically, um, if I can just read this, this says, in recognition of your actions, this is for Officer Franklin, in recognition of your actions and diligent efforts that led to location of a missing person which subsequently saved her life. The missing person would have surely perished had it not been for your efforts an outstanding teamwork with your partner officers. On April 8, 2015, you were assigned to investigate a missing person's case. This particular missing person happened to be an 11-year-old mentally challenged girl who left her residence on 32nd Avenue more than four hours prior to you being notified at 8.44 p.m. Once receiving the information, you immediately began follow-up into locating the missing person. Through investigation and leads, you developed information that led to a plausible area where the girl was last seen. You did this all the while sorting through other information that was determined not to be relevant to the case. Your investigation eventually led you to a residence on 2nd Street, which is on the other side of town. Based on your interview with the resident who had admitted to last seeing the girl at approximately 7.30 p.m., you decided that this location was the area that needed to be concentrated on. You coordinated with Officer Ray, who responded to assist with your search effort. This led to the discovery of a single shoe print which in your mind further confirmed that the missing girl was last seen in this area. You and Officer Ray, along with his canine partner Harley, began to check an adjacent wooded area. The police canine led to a path and alerted to an overturned abandoned boat. You checked this boat and discovered the girl lying under the boat nearly 11 p.m. She was unresponsive and apparently suffering from hypothermia. After checking her vital signs and realizing the severity of the situation, you scooped up the girl, carried her out of the wooded area to the location where you rendered first aid and awaited the arrival of medical personnel. She was eventually treated to the hospital where she recovered and returned to her family. Outstanding job, officer. This is his uh, certificate of accommodation and it just reflects exactly what it was written. 
graduation. And last but certainly not least, I have Officer Ray um, and canine partner Harley. In recognition of your actions that led to the location of a missing person would subsequently save your life. The missing person would have surely perished had it not been for your effort. Outstanding teamwork and quick thinking with your partner officers. On April 8, 2015, you were on duty when a fellow officer was involved in a missing person case of an 11-year-old mentally challenged girl. Information was developed that led to a plausible location where the girl was last seen. You requested the location to assist. Coupled with your canine partner, Harley, you, Harley, and Officer Franklin located a single shoe print, which you believe was further evidence that you were on the right track in looking for the missing girl. Without hesitation, thinking outside the box, you and your canine partner started a canine track from the shoe print. Harley, being an apprehension canine, would not generally be used in a search and rescue operation. But nevertheless, you thought it to be a circumstance that would be beneficial. This was a decision that would pay off with life-saving results. Shortly after starting the track, Harley led you through a wooded area into an abandoned overturned boat. Recognizing your canine partner alert behavior, you directed Officer Franklin to search under the boat where the girl was subsequently located. She was suffering from apparent hypothermia and was unresponsive. First aid was provided and she was transported to the hospital where she received treatment and was later returned to her family. Had it not been for your outstanding teamwork with both Officer Franklin and your canine partner, this situation would have surely ended in tragedy. I commend you and your canine team for a job well done. Way to go, Harley! <laughs> that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We thank you and thank you, officers. Welcome aboard and thank you for the good job you guys have done for us. You're allowed to have three minutes this evening on to speak on anything that is not on tonight's agenda. So as long as it's not on tonight's agenda, you may come up and speak for three minutes. It will be timed by our city clerk. I do have a couple forms already filled out. The first person is Linda Richardson, and she'd like to speak on code enforcement. Our next public comment is Kelly Reed. 
you like to speak on code enforcement? Hello. My name is Kelly Reed. I am a resident of Clear Lake, and I am the person on the other side of that empty lot that is being trashed by the squatters. Um, the pictures you have are the pictures that were recently taken from the pictures two weeks ago. These pictures were taken on Sunday of the development of the lot, which is more garbage. And the trailer has not been touched, it has not been moved. I have heard from other sources that it was scheduled to be hauled off three different times and it's still there. It hasn't moved one inch. And I've had power tools missing from my yard, from my back porch that is in the middle of a quarter acre lot since those people moved over next door, the squatters. So I love Clear Lake. It's beautiful out there. But it's not beautiful looking at that lot. So what can we do as citizens? What could we do? If I owned that lot, the city would be after me to clean up that lot. And I've been dealing with this for over eight months, and the city wouldn't allow me eight months to clean it up if it was my mess because I own the lot. So what can we as citizens do to protect ourselves and defend ourselves and clean up the lot? What is our legal standpoint? What can we do to resolve this situation? In public comment, we are not allowed to I know, go back I and forth. I can refer you to our staff. Okay, who can answer your question? It is, uh, if you are Joan? I would like to have a meeting with you. I have I've called you two or three times. If you would call me, I'd greatly appreciate it so that we could have a conversation. Okay, I would appreciate it. So that's all I have to say. I mean, I have more important things to do with my time than to complain about people. I don't complain about anybody. But I'm not going to let my child, which is sitting right over here, be afraid to walk across the street because of this drug infested nervous and bickering going on. Mm. Okay? Uh, in the middle of the night, they woke me up out of a dead sleep, acting like they're trying to kill each other, and I heard breaking glass. Well, yes, I called. And the officer came out and told them, uh, you fighting? Oh, no, no, no. Well, they stopped their fighting. So, what else can we do? I would appreciate it if something could get done relatively soon. It would be nice to see some kind of activity in a positive manner in cleaning up this lot. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bill Shields. Good evening. I have a concern about what I'm hearing. Now, it's my understanding that the city has something like six million in B bonds, two million in A bonds. Now, how's this money going to be spent? Are the citizens going to be involved in this? Are you just going to do what you want to do? Now, if the city does not get the citizens involved with workshops and stuff, how to spend this money, you're going to see me out there demonstrating because the city over the last years has wasted more money than I can even count. Thank you. Thank you. Estelle Creel. I might need a couple extra minutes tonight. 
three minutes time by our city clerk. Whatever. <laughs> now, at the last meeting, Bruno uh, challenged just about everything I said, stating that I was incorrect. Well, Bruno, this is the ordinance in regards to fences. You cannot, with a 25-foot setback, put up a eight-foot fence unless you go before the Planning Commission and pay the fees. And then you could probably build a hundred-foot fence if it was approved. Also, you were slightly incorrect, and this is the newspaper that you might try reading sometimes, that actually states what the minimum and the maximum fines were charged at the previous meeting. And those fines were doubled. And the minimum fine, even though if you had read your packet, the minimum fine, or no, you stated the maximum fine was 2500 That was like incorrect. Also, back in February, over at the Senior Center, uh, I made the statement that those slides that had been shown at a previous meeting were treetops. You once again stated that they weren't. But prior to that, we had a conversation, Bruno. You told me in our conversation that you had seen uh, marijuana plants in Humboldt County and in Clear Lake, and that you had known that those were not marijuana plants in those slides. You also told me that you spoke to the city and you told them that they should apologize to the people for giving them a bogus story. Also, you told me who did those slides. Well, you know something, Bruno? You didn't have to tell me because I already knew about that person. So get your facts straight, guy. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at public comment this evening? Okay, seeing none, I will close public comment. Moving on to the consent agenda. Is there anyone from the council that would like to pull an item? Is there anyone from the public that would like to pull an item from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none. May I get a motion? Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as submitted. I'll second it. And a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Overton? Aye. Councilmember Sabatier? Aye. Councilmember Purdock? Aye. Vice Mayor Fortino Dixon? Aye. Mayor Lucilla? Aye. Moving on to business, item number eight. Consideration of second reading of ordinance number 175-2015, amending ordinance number 2013-161A, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Clear Lake, amending Chapter X of the Clear Lake Municipal Code, adding Section 10-7, through prohibiting commercial medical marijuana cultivation and cultivation on vacant properties and limiting cultivation of mounds in the City of Clear Lake. And I will turn this over to our city manager. Thank you. I have just a few comments. This item is on the agenda as a result of council's consideration and first reading of the uh, proposed ordinance at the May 28th council meeting. It was uh, there were some direction uh, provided to staff that meeting to make some modifications for the ordinance before you this evening, which is here for second reading. Um, the staff report gives the highlights of what those were. I'm going to turn it over to the city attorney at this point to. Uh, go through those in detail and then answer your questions and then certainly for public comment and then ultimately potentially your uh, adoption of the ordinance. Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. So we are here for a second reading based on the, the direction that staff got from the council from, from two weeks ago. So we did uh, amend the, the ordinance pursuant to those recommendations the, or the direction. The, the major change is that originally the ordinance came with, with a six plant per parcel. That has been modified 
uh, pursuant to permission to the original ordinance, which had, for lack of a better term, a sliding scale based on the size of the lots. So that language from that ordinance, which was passed back in 2013, was supplanted into this uh, current ordinance that's before you. There were a couple of other, um, I guess, more minor changes that we made. We eliminated, there was language about a grandfather clause for Grove that was close to a, a child care center that was deleted. We, there was some other language about removing the word regulatory, or uh, from prohibitive to regulatory to reflect it's no longer it's not a ban, it's regulation of cultivation. We also further defined the, the hazardous condition to talk about the summary abatement, so that was more clear. Um, there was also a, a short and reduced time frame on the, the amount of days for uh, abating the, the nuisance from 15 to 10 days. I do want to point out for the council though that before you is a slightly modified version from the one that was previously put on the agenda that was posted. And that is because going back, I talked to staff and, 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 and my thinking of staff's comment about the height restriction on the marijuana plant. That was something we discussed actually two meetings ago, but last meeting the direction from the council was to put in the, ordinance, the previous ordinance, the 2013 ordinance, and in looking at that one, there actually is not a per se height restriction on 50 feet. Instead, if you look at page six uh, in the middle, there's a paragraph there, and it speaks to the height limit can be just so it's screened in from public view, visible from public view. So if somebody has plants growing above their fence line, that would be contrary and prohibited by the ordinance. The fences generally are six feet, depends on where you are and what variance you may get, so I'm not going to get into what that specific fence might be. But in so doing, I realized that wasn't the intent, the, the council's direction about a height limit, so we, I had deleted a paragraph in there about there being a six foot height limit. Because I don't think it, even if that's what the council wants to do, and certainly you can change it now, but what that means is we have to come back for another second reading in two weeks to pass that. So this ordinance as drafted should reflect uh, the direction from two weeks ago, and if, if after public comment, the council's uh, willing, we can pass this tonight and then we go into effect in, in 30 days from now. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them at this time. Thank you. Does anyone have anything before I open? Okay. I will open this item up to public comment. Anyone like to speak on this item? Seeing none, I will close public comment. Does, okay, is there someone that would like to speak? So please stand up and come forward. I'd like to have some clarity on your changes in regards to your changes this time, various from two weeks ago. Our changes, I'll refer that to our city attorney if you just spoke about them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I highlighted well, it's very brief and not real explicit. The, if the council would like me to re-explain what we did, I mean, really what, there were very specific changes to some sections I'm happy to go through, but the fundamental change is that the six plant boardings that the council we previously discussed was changed to go back to the previous 2013 ordinance, which has a varying number of plants per parcel. The, the rest of the ordinance generally maintains the same. We have in the back end of the sections allows for the eradication, for the enforcement, and the penalties associated with um, anybody who's violating this order. So if there are specific questions about any changes, we went through, if you recall two weeks ago, there were, I'd say five or six word choices, the definition of hazardous condition, um, changing that were prohibited to regulate. Um, we further added language under public nuisance to say that um, it doesn't mean just no cult, no cultivation of marijuana, it's marijuana cultivation in violation of the ordinance. And that is it. We also changed the word under sale materials to include any materials used for cultivation to make that more clear. 
And that, those are all the changes that were made. So the, the changes were posted along with the agenda, just like if we got, it was able to be seen. That's correct. Very good. Give me a definition of your nuisance. Well, the council like that. I mean, it's a very wide and broad thing. I would say you're a nuisance. Why would you? Uh, would you um, give a copy of this? That's how the definition is a map line. I thought it was three minutes. Oh, no, we're not on that anymore. For Excuse me, something. directed to us, please stop. Thank oh, okay. We're not on the three minute uh, scale no more. So let's keep it on our questions. Would you, and as offering a copy to you if you'd like to have it. Here's the definitions here. Okay.
Bringing it back to the council. Anyone like to discuss this item on the council? <laughs> So I close public comment. We're in the middle of our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Vice Mayor Fortino Dixon. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think this is a terrific stopgap. I think this um, provides the uh, necessary teeth in order to enforce this um, ordinance this growing season. Um, what we choose to do in the future, or what the ad hoc committee comes back as a recommendation with, will be different than this, but um, I think this serves our purpose for right now, and right now is when we need to um, attend to the issues at hand. So I'm, I'm very happy with the document as it stands. Anyone else? May I get a motion? And I move to approve. Um, Ordinance number 1752-2015, amending ordinance number 2013-161A, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Clear Lake, amending Chapter 10 of the Clear Lake Municipal Code, and adding Section 10-7, prohibiting commercial medical marijuana cultivation and cultivation on vacant properties, and limiting cultivation amounts in the City of Clear Lake. And read by title only. Second. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Overton? Aye. Councilmember Sabatier? Aye. Councilmember Furnock? Aye. Vice Mayor Fortino Dixon? Aye. Mayor Lustalo? Aye. Okay. Now I will turn this over to our city manager for one of the last reports. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so the last couple of weeks have been fairly busy uh, in terms of working on the budget. We had our budget workshop uh, last Thursday evening on the 4th. I thought it went very well. It was focused on goals and objectives and policies, uh, which will be back before you uh, at the end of the month when you adopt the budget. We do have a workshop scheduled on the budget document itself, which you did receive a copy of this evening, next Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, that would be the time to get through into the details of the actual budget document itself. And, and as you read through it during the week, I'd like for you to really notice the changes that have been made to the document that we feel from a staff perspective have made it yet a better document than it was last year and we'll continue to evolve that process. Uh, Tuesday of this week, I made a presentation to Rotary Club, uh, kind of the state of the city, if you will, and where we are and things that have been accomplished um, over certainly the last couple of years, but most recently with the uh, positive forward steps with the implementation of the Lakeshore Corridor Plan, uh, the general plan and so on. Attended the healthy collaborative meeting uh, last evening at the, uh, the, at the hospital. Uh, attended the breakfast meeting this morning, kind of gave the same state of the city address this morning to that group. Um, I would like to remind you that tomorrow, uh, Saturday evening, excuse me, is the canine fundraiser. Doors open at 5, the event starts at 5.30, and that concludes my report. Oh, I did want to say in terms of the budget, it is posted on the website. There's a copy, a public copy available at the counter for anybody who's interested in, in reviewing it. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Overton? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I, of course, went to our goals and objectives budget uh, meeting. I also was at the Healthy Collaborative uh, with Joan uh, at St. Molina Hospital here. Um, me and most of my uh, colleagues here went through a training as a tourism ambassador training. Uh, yesterday, and that was very educational. I think we all liked it to learn a little more about our county than what we uh, realized. We don't. We have so much here. We say we don't have, but we have tons of stuff here. And um, I also went to a, a Code Youth Center meeting. And I'll just keep pushing. Council Member Sabatier. Uh, very quickly, we did the budget workshop on June fourth. Uh, yesterday, went to the. Uh, Certified Tourism Ambassador. I, we are now official CTAs. That's exciting. Uh, and that's it for me. Council Member Overton. Uh, 
Councilmember Purdom. Well, very short. I'll try to be quick as well. Okay. Uh, work with the uh, cleanup <coughs> Clear Lake, June 6th. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who turned out. It was an amazing crowd. Everybody worked their tails off. Um, special thanks to Supervisor Jeff Smith, who went out in the airboat. We were collecting quite a bit of garbage along the um, Cache Creek, all the way down to the dam, just about. Um, collected quite a bit of garbage from there. Um, teams were sent out into the avenues, as well as into the park area. Uh, I, I don't know the quantity of garbage that was collected, but I know that uh, it, was, it was very impressive. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is we collected quite a few shopping carts, shopping carts thrown in Cache Creek and other waterways and drainages. Uh, please keep an eye on that. But I also want to thank publicly those stores, Safeway, Grocery Outlet, Booth, etc., that are making changes before we've even gotten ordinance in place to keep their prop their property on site, keep their shopping carts um, contained within their property. Um, thank you, thank you very much for doing that. I still believe we need to move forward with the ordinance, uh, but it's nice to see some positive things happening. Um, I want to thank our public works director. He kind of knocked some things down as far as the weeds go out in front keeping our front yard looking good, and I hope that everybody else will do the same, keep the fire danger down, and make our city look great for the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Fortino Dixon. Um, I'm so sad I missed my first Clear Lake cleanup day in six years. Um, Where were you? <laughs> I was being a tourist somewhere else, and I got lots of cool ideas to bring back. Because um, Maui is not a much unlike us. We, they have some good streets, they have some bad streets. <laughs> we did some interesting exploring. And um, then immediately I went to the CTA workshop and was able to make some connections there. So I'm really excited about Clear Lake's opportunities and the direction that we're heading. And I would just like to thank our city manager for being our, uh, being our light house for the last four years and um, and always bringing us back to is this uh, is this following through with our goals and objectives is it are the steps that we're taking really getting us to the point we want to be and i think yes they have been and i am really excited about what we have in our future okay i also participated in the cleanup clear lake um and i was busy with Facebook on that as well, taking pictures of shopping carts and tagging managers of the stores <laughs> and saying, hi, we're glad to help. So um, I'm not sure if he was happy about that, but <coughs> got the job done. So with that, I uh, attended the Rotary where our city manager spoke and she did a wonderful job recapping almost the whole my whole term and it's been amazing. I was very, very excited to listen to what's happened because sometimes you can get drawn down in the everyday things and the all the monotony and the negativity that sometimes comes along with all of this. And she recapped it all to just like point of order. Man, we are here, we're going somewhere, and such a run, folks. And that's what we plan to do, thank you. So moving on, um, I also uh, attended Seroptimus today and Oh, I did attend the CTA class. Check your email, folks, because there's an email there awaiting you. And it does say that past you become a um, tourism ambassador and that you will receive your pin from the county. Jeff, are you going to pin that? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, better be careful what I'm wishing for on that one. Okay, very good. So with that, I will um, close tonight's meeting. Sure. For anyone wanting to know what happened at the budget workshop, it's on the uh, board there to the west side of the building, uh, or the room here, if you're interested in seeing some of the things that were discussed and the priorities of the city. Um, I apologize for not going to become an ambassador, but I had to go to an ABC Lake Transit meeting. Oh, we're um, going to. Thank you for that so uh, I was busy with that with Mr. Smith and uh, Supervisor District 1. Thank you. Yeah, Very right. good. Meetings over.